on Constantine, um, founder and member of the Abilene City Council Watchdog Group. Proud to say that we have 312 members to our group now. Um, and uh, with all due respect, I'm disappointed in this. I think that um, some of these cuts were necessary, obviously. And um, for the last four years, you know, I've been talking about, you know, you know, keep the muscle loose, the fat. And um, I thought for quite some time that some of the management positions were paid disproportionately well as compared to some of the um, people that would be, you know, your general basic non-skilled workers or um, vocational blue collar types, that kind of thing. But the thing is, is um, I understand that this was a recommendation that did come from the fire department. Now, I didn't know if they were required to make this decision or if this was upon, if it was compulsory. Can you tell me that? I'll uh, ask Mr. Gilly. It was a decision that was made in consultation with the fire chief. It was uh, There were several of us involved in making decisions about where cuts should be made and what the appropriate cuts would be. This was one of them. Okay. Now, um, I understand that um, this is going to reduce the budget, but how much by this one individual? Well, there were two individuals that were taken off. There was an assistant to Mr. Gilly and uh, this, this firefighter. The thing is, is you're still going to have, are you going to have to pay these people unemployment? In other words, how much is the city actually saving by these people not working here? Did they get some kind of severance package? Or did they just get fired and that's the last amount of money they're going to see from the city? I mean, in other words, when, um, I can't remember the lady's name, but when uh, she was relieved of her duties, uh, is that the last uh, amount of money that she's going to receive? Mr. Constantine, the, 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 the item before us is the fire department only. So, Mike, if you would stick to the fire department, because that's all that we're considering today. Okay. Same question goes for him. Uh, and Mayor, I'll, I'll defer to you if you want me to answer that question. This is a, a matter that uh, I would be happy to share any way that you wish. However, uh, in respect for the individuals involved, I would rather not get into personnel mm -hmm. discussions at a public meeting, but uh, whatever you choose to uh, oh, okay. that was. Well, the reason why I ask is because they said this was necessary because of uh, budget shortfalls. Well, how much money was saved by this? Was it really necessary? I mean, if they sent, say, $25,000, you know, how much money was saved? Well, you know, Mr. Like in, Mr. If Constantine, they, it's clearly it, noted and been stated that an annualized saving of approximately 110000 will be realized. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to clarify. Well, it's clear to say that, sir. Uh, I wanted to make sure that I understood it correctly. Oh, well, so please. Um... I just don't think that um, I understand that the general fund is used for emergency funds and such. But the thing is, is I, and I don't know exactly how much we have right now. I mean, I knew at one time it's $15.9 million. But you're asking these people, and a lot of these people, that these are hard times right now, to take take off days. But the city's got money in the bank. You know, if if I owe money to somebody and I can't, and I don't want to pay them when I do have money in the bank because I'm saving it for something that might happen in real life. Most people aren't going to feel very sorry for me. And I'm not too sure that this is fair. You know, if you ask people to take furloughs and everything like that, and, you know, I know that the city has gone to extreme measures to cut back on spending, but you've got money in the bank. I know some of it is spent for, you know, potential things that may or may not happen and in case of an emergency, but um, it, it seems to me like this is um, this is not quite equitable. What specific things do you think we should cut in the budget? I'm not talking about things cut in the budget. I think Mr. Gilly... You're talking about things not cutting, so in order for us to have a balanced budget mm -hmm. by law, we must make some kind of cuts. So I'm asking you, since you're standing there okay. telling us that we don't think we're doing the right thing, what do you think the right thing is? Well, I, I know we're not going to get into that because we're talking about the ordinance, whether 
it eliminates one position in the fire department. That's all that's under consideration today. This is not a campaign for you uh, to talk about issues. The question before us is eliminating one fire position. And you have told us that you do not think it's equitable. Is there anything else you need to add? Oh, I, I'm not campaigning. I would be for or against this, whether I was running for city council or not. Okay. Do you have anything else to add to the ordinance that's before us? Um, no, sir. Okay. Thank you for your testimony today. Would anyone else like to speak for or against this? Ron Constantine, on behalf of the Abilene City Council Watchdog Group. Um, before I begin, I just wanted to make something clear, especially to Mrs. Moore. Um, I was given a list by people, not just myself, of things that were of concern to my group, and some of them because they can't work or because, frankly, they just don't want to come up here and talk on live television, don't want to do this. Some of them feel like there might be some animosity towards them. Nothing personal, guys. I'd love to talk to every one of you individually. <clears throat> Seriously. Talk with me. I'm, I'll be nice. I promise. Call me on the phone if you don't want to meet in person. Um, as for that issue, that was brought up before. I'm getting to the point. But the thing is, is you have information that I have to look up where you can just ask for it. And I may not know, always know the answers. And if I'm just asking a question, if I seem rumored, I'm not trying to be. Okay. Fair enough. Now, the thing is, is you haven't brought this up, but it's a concern to me personally. Now, generally speaking, I'm just going to be on, on the side of not laying a bunch of burden on the business owner. However, number five, in the interest of safety, because I didn't read about the fire department thing because I was reading this instead the last two nights. Um, it's, uh, it's my understanding that, that, generally speaking, cities, when subdivisions are built, usually um, make a limit at 60 homes or there must be two exits out of that subdivision in a concern of safety habits. For instance, the house right by the exit is on fire and everybody burns up and dies, worst case scenario. Um, the staff recommended this based upon um, what other cities do, and PNZ suggested 100. Um, personally, I think that probably that you should go, in my personal opinion, in the interest of safety. 60 instead of 100, simply in the interest of safety. Now, um, I think is uh, I think what Mr. Span and it may not be practical to do, but I think what Mr. Span said was a great idea. Um, one of the things that I I've had is you know I'm kind of conservative about certain things is I think that right or wrong sometimes ordinances are good that um, that they lay a lot of burdens on the people that sometimes aren't considered until afterwards. And um, when you're talking about, like, for instance, is, you know, the signs, the things that are on the developers, you know, I think that maybe, you know, it should be taken into consideration that, um, I'll give you an example that's happened recently, I won't bring up any names, but a couple of years ago, well, it was about a year ago, there was a developer that even though he wasn't in the city, he was in the extraterritorial jurisdiction, and he just didn't follow the code. Well, the people that were living out there were upset. And of course, it was in the county, and it just caused a big problem. You know, um, I think maybe it, it's equitable. You know, if uh, I hadn't thought about that before, I like the idea. You know, I mean, if you're going to require these people to do something, um, maybe if you share part of the burden, I don't know, 50-50 is reasonable, but um, seems to make sense. Seems like a good idea. You know, um, there's two sides to all these issues. And uh, if anybody here perceives that I hear in, in disrespect, I'm representing other folks that may not necessarily have points of view that I agree with. And, and I'm sorry <coughs> if I showed any disrespect at all to any of them. Um, as and um, as far as the uh, signage issue, um, I think that as long as you're telling people, you know, that we don't have enough money in the city right now and you're going to have to go home for a day, anything that you can cut, like signs, for instance, for this thing, is prob probably going to be a better idea. That's just my personal opinion. I appreciate y'all's time.